So previously um, I got the fuel tank repaired and uh, mounted on the bike which I'm not going to lie I found to be very laborious and I wasn't very happy with the outcome of the repair. But nonetheless it is repaired and now we have a fuel tank. So things are getting pretty complete now and I feel we should move our attention to the back of the bike and uh, think about getting a mud guard on there. So today I want to tackle that and also potentially getting that chrome uh, oil tank mounted on there. That would be really, really cool. Um, yeah, let's get into it. So we want to get a mud guard on there today, um, at least on the back. Now mud guards is something I kind of just seem to end up with a load of um, and they're always good to have in different sizes and different profiles and all the rest of it but I rarely ever buy them new. I usually get them from auto jumbles for like two quid or whatever. However when I actually was building my 500 Triumph I did buy a brand new aluminium one um, and ended up not using it so it's just sat around. I thought it would be perfect to have this for this bike. I think it's going to work really really well. Um, whether we keep it in this sort of semi-polished look or whether it kind of gets brushed, um, I'm not sure. But it is the right profile, it fits the tyre really nicely. I think it's going to look pretty sleek. So we want to put that on there. But one of the sort of hardest things about making a kind of clean and mean looking bike um, that is also sensible is lighting. What the hell do you do about lights? Um, and I want some and I don't want them to be you know tiny little things because I like them to be pretty visible at night I'm semi hoping that this will actually become my new daily so It needs to be sensible for a cold English winter's night uh, Where you can't see anything because it's raining sideways So my initial plan was to go for a Sparto rear light. Um, these are really really cool I've always been a fan of them. I've always wanted to use one so I was delighted when I managed to track down an old repro from uh, MGO. Very, very well made indeed, but it just doesn't look right. And to be honest, when you actually mount that on the mudguard, there's not really a lot of visibility at all. Um, either no visibility for the number plate because it sits like that, or not much visibility for the light. So it's kind of, well, it's not going to do, is it? Anyway, as fate would have it, I recently bought uh, another project, a little pre-unit Triumph thing, um, which you've probably seen lurking in the background. And with it came, quite frankly, an abominable mudguard. It was just so funny that anyone could consider it being useful anymore. But I've got it anyway. This thing has been mounted and abused in more ways than I care to mention. It's had struts welded on, it's got this extra plate, it's got like a thousand holes, crack repairs, all the rest of it. This is not going to be of use to me, although at one point it was a really nice sturdy sort of mudguard. However, I spied this little light on the back and I thought that might just do. This takes one of the Lucas, I think it's L564 or something like that, lenses. Um, it doesn't really matter, but it is more visible and it's quite a sleek looking unit. So I'd like to use this. I think we'll uh, we'll take this off of uh, this mudguard and then uh, we'll see if we can marry it up with our brand new mudguard and get that mounted on there. Um, this should be fairly straightforward because the mounting points on the rear section of the frame You've got the tab that I brazed over the top. There's a bracket to be made that goes in between the shocks. And then there's one down by the swing arm as well. They are all central to the tyre. So in theory, once I've decided how long I want it, um, all I have to do is mount the centre point on the mudguard, drill the holes and bolt it on. So uh, let's get this off of this strange thing. And uh, then we can at least marry it up and have a look. And hopefully we'll get that mounted on there as well.
So obviously I've separated the brake light uh, from the knackered mud guard, um, and this is all the hardware that was used to attach that, which is pretty mad. I've never seen such an assortment of washers and strange bolts, um, but it's going to stock up my nuts and bolts box a little bit. Our nice new alley mud guard has been drilled. Um, I've also cut down this end and shaped it a little bit uh, just to give it a little bit of space between the swing arm and the mud guard. You might look at this when I attach it and think, oh, there's not a lot of space there for pivot, but actually that close to the pivot point, it barely moves at all. Um, so yeah, that's drilled, ready to go on there. I've got some nuts and bolts. I've also got some washers. I like to put in uh, sort of a larger washer on the underside to spread the load a little bit. And I sometimes dish those as well. Some of you may not agree with that, but that's what I do. And it works for me. Um, I think it kind of stops it from cracking around the hole. Obviously this is alley, it's quite soft. Um, and it's nice to have a little bit of rigidity at those bolting points. So in terms of actually finding the center of the mud guard, what I usually do is take a bit of masking tape, cut it to length either side and then double it back. So in the middle, you've got that crease line um, and then I'll test it by eye. With mud guards and stuff like that, you can get really caught up with measurements, measure it out and then put it on there and it actually doesn't look right. So you're far better off going by eye, trust your eye. Um, which is what I've done and I think it's going to work. So let's go ahead, we'll get that bolted on now and uh, then we can have a look at making that sort of brace that goes in between the shock mounts. the mud guard attached and I'm pretty pleased with that it's pretty darn rigid um, at some point when I put the brake light on here I'm going to decide whether I want to run a brace which you sometimes see coming from the uh, shock mount there but um, yeah I've had a bit of a result so that middle brace you guys aren't going to believe it but I was standing there thinking oh, I wonder what I can make that out of what kind of scrap metal have I got laying around and I thought it doesn't necessarily have to be steel could be aluminium. And then I looked at that knackered mud guard again and saw the brace on that and I thought, I'll just give that a whirl and see if it fits. <laughs> Cannot complain at that. So that's just marvelous really. Um, it fits in there very nicely indeed. Um, it's pretty ugly. So I'm gonna take it back out now and uh, just cut off some bits, shape it up, make it look a little bit tidier and then I can drill the holes to mount that. But I'm pretty pleased about that because that just kind of saves me more of a job and it's quite nice to have an early one as well so uh, yeah, grand job. Right, so we've now got our mud guard very firmly attached indeed, and it's looking pretty smart. Now, I was starting to think about maybe mounting that oil tank. You can see right there, I've had a little play around and stuff. And what I realized is that's actually gonna be far larger of a job than I initially thought. Um, the battery tray needs to be mounted before we get around to doing that, and the battery tray, well, it's in need of a lot of work. I will save that for another episode because it basically, in the accident that this bike had, um, has got fairly damaged, but then there's also rust factors as well. So we're gonna to need to take a bit of a more in-depth look at that. So I'm gonna move my attention to putting that brake light on now. 
I've managed to get an old Lucas L564. Um, I didn't want to repro because believe it or not there are subtle differences with them and that's me being very very fussy but I managed to get hold of a pretty crap second hand one and I've spent some time merging that with the uh, backing plate and bulb holder that came on the mudguard. So now I have my complete light. Very smart looking it is too. Um, and we need to mount that on there. There is one more thing that we'll require and that is a rubber gasket. So uh, when I've been over the workshop and I've got some rubber sheet, I'll be able to make that. That's just a case of cutting it to the shape and putting it underneath there. Um, but I should be able to mount it on the mud guard anyway. So for that, you can see right here, we've got a little countersunk hole and then there's two more just under there. Um, so I've got my little countersunk bolts and uh, we're just going to marry it up, see where it looks nice, drill some holes and get it bolted on there. So, I've now mounted the brake light and I'm very pleased with how it looks indeed. Um, a very classic British bit of styling and I think it flows with the bike really, really nicely. What's great about this is that it also includes the number plate bracket so I don't have to worry about doing anything with that. I think that'll look quite smart. Um, yeah, overall I'm really, really pleased. Now obviously I've got to wire it up but I haven't got anything to power it right now so there's no point in doing any of that or even attempting it and I have got to take it back off at some point to put a rubber gasket on there. That shouldn't be too much of a deal. Um, I can do that between videos. Uh, but we've got a mud guard and we've got a brake light, which is really, really cool. So yeah, that's gonna be it from me today. We've run out of time. Uh, next time, I'm not entirely sure what we'll look at. Maybe restoring that battery tray, maybe fitting the oil tank, and maybe even a little bit of engine stuff. We'll see. Um, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Um, I really, really appreciate it. We're heading towards 2,000 subscribers now, so uh, I'm pretty pleased with that, and I really, really do thank you guys for watching the videos, taking the time to comment, like, subscribe, all that lot. I will see you next time uh, when we're getting another step closer to getting this thing back on the road.